I suppose my first question I want to ask you, for those who are watching on video or on TV, was whether my T-shirt would be in breach if it was broadcast in Scotland. Uh, it's a T-shirt that says woman, women, the plural, noun, adult, human, female. So, by definition, I would have thought that a man who thinks that he's transitioned to be a woman is not a woman because he's not an adult, human, female. I mean, it, would, that, would that put me in breach of the Scottish hate laws, hate crime laws? Well, nobody, nobody will know until somebody complains about you and the police investigate. Oh, well, please so do already complain, problem, everybody. Do, please do complain. Very, very happy for that to go ahead. Look, I'm sure you were as thrilled as I was when you saw J.K. Rowling's very long thread of tweets yesterday from abroad. She's on holiday, basically listing a whole... On April Fool's Day, of course, the day this law came in, hilariously, listing a whole load of trans women, i.e. men, some of them sex offenders, one a TV broadcaster, others models, UN women's representatives and others, and, and talking about them in a jokey way as if they were all women and then going, ha ha, April Fool, of course these people are old men. And basically saying, arrest me. She actually put the hashtag, arrest me, if it's illegal to say that. Could she be arrested? I mean, what will happen is that she'll get reported and then they'll look at it. And if they want, they can come and talk to her, check that it was her who made those tweets. And what happens next is anybody's guess. The threshold for investigating further on the basis of um, th this new law when it comes to the trans strand specifically is just that it was abusive. So abusive words don't have to be threatening or violent. They don't, and it can be just one instance of words. So, you know, it looks like yes, maybe if you think that saying a man is a, a man is abusive, and that's exactly what the trans lobby has been pushing for the past decade. That if a man doesn't want to be called a man and you call him a man, that that's like using the N word for a black person. Mm. But obviously, it's not. Man is not a slur. It's just the ordinary name for half of all adult humans. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we've got to win back. We've got to just keep calling men men and dare them to arrest us if that's what they're going to do Absolutely. and establish that that is not a slur. Uh, it, 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 exactly. And again, it's rather insulting to men to pretend it's a slur. And this issue only seems to happen when we talk about misgendering. I would say correctly gendering somebody um, when it's in this direction. But that's particularly because of the implications of allowing a man to call himself a woman, a trans woman, and then to say that a trans woman is a woman and, and, and are just as equal with women and, and uh, are able to get the same rights as women, is because women, for very clear physical reasons, have safe spaces in a way that men don't. No man is scared or intimidated by a woman going, can I use your loose because there's a long queue outside the ladies. No man is intimidated. They might be a bit embarrassed but not intimidated by having a woman in a hospital bed next to them or, or the like. But women have had safe spaces for many, many years for a reason, because we are physically weaker and we are vulnerable to the bad men who would attack us. And the funny thing is, we don't know who the bad men are, so we need to ban all men from those spaces. Established, accepted by all, all women and all men until well, just a few years ago when suddenly we were told we were bad people if we wouldn't accept any man who even just put a wig on in our safe spaces. So this law, this law, this law matters because what it undermines matters. Yeah, exactly, because it's taking away from us our ability to say, to advocate for our own human rights. Like, it's exactly a reversal. What they're saying is that it's hateful for us to say that this man is a man. But actually, for us, it's hateful to stop us from saying that this man is a man. We can't stand up for our rights unless we can say who's a man and who's a woman. I mean, I tweeted similar things to J.K. Rowling yesterday, obviously not picked yeah. up and not written as well as hers. But I have There's already been told... There's a reason why she's uh, a multi-millionaire author. <laughs> I think she's wonderful because she's doing this to act as a shield for women who can't afford to take the hit the way that she did. She's an absolute superhero. She's the biggest beneficiary to women's rights in the world today. And, you know, she does it really for the good of other women mm -hmm. and not for herself. It would be so easy for her to stay silent on this yeah. and just let other people take the, the heat, like all, all the other celebrities are. Well, well, exactly. And indeed, those who've attacked her, there's all those who've had that made their careers and their fortunes from uh, being, you know, in her films and uh, 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 that, that she wrote from, from those amazing Harry Potter books. Um, this is the interesting thing. There's a lot of people say, oh, God, why are you going on about this? Why are you trying to play these culture wars? What's your issue? Why do you have a problem with this? But the, but the reality is we didn't start this culture war. This is a war that's been waged against women. Um, and I would say in the case of, you know, so-called trans kids, you know, against children as well, um, and against society as well. And people don't realise often, you know, it's not just the JK Rowling's. People say, well, she's fine. She can afford the medical, so the medical, the, the, the lawyer's fees. And, you know, they're not stupid enough to put her behind bars. But there are 
thousands of other people in ordinary jobs who are being hounded out of their jobs, they are being sacked, uh, they are being cancelled, they are being censored, and there are millions more who are too afraid to say anything because they fear that will happen to them. This is very That's right. real. That's right. It's the chilling effect. So people who can't afford to take the hit or who are just, you know, not as brave as she is and not everybody is as brave as her, they have to stay quiet. Um, and if you are reported and they go as far as investigating you, they can do so anywhere in the UK. They can ask your police force anywhere in the UK to come and visit you. Uh, the police force can ask to take your phone, uh, not ask, actually just take your phone and your computer if they want to establish a pattern of behaviour. They keep them for weeks or months and probably in the end you won't be charged, but already the process has been the punishment. You know, when you've got a, an aggrieved bunch of very aggressive people who think that naming their sex is abusive. You're set up for a disaster here. There was an amendment, Joanne Lamont, a wonderful Scottish politician, put forward an amendment that would have explicitly said that anything to do with stating people's sex or stating that sex is binary and so on will be excluded. And the Scottish government decided yeah. not to allow that amendment. That's what they should have done because all the vexatious stuff is going to be on the trans strand. It and is. it's all going to be about targeting women. And, and that's the thing, it is interesting how much more the targeting and the abuse has happened to women who speak out on this rather than men, although Graham Linhan, I think, is, a, is an exception on, on this. But this is the thing, as you pointed out, this, this is a law in Scotland, but if, you know, my tweet, your tweet, this show can be seen in Scotland, I'm wearing this T-shirt, some might not like it, they can say, um, please, Scottish police, I'm reporting to you, this is either a non-crime haze incident or a crime, and... Um, and can you please ask, you know, the Metropolitan Police or whoever to come and investigate? And as you say also, you know, the process is the punishment. It, you know, people, you know, they lose their jobs as a result of this. They, they you know, they're under the stigma. Uh, you say having your phone confiscated. These, these, are, these have a massive impact on people's lives. And people are scared. Um, do you think that... Um, that the, the Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, stepping in and saying that uh, he, uh, he supports uh, J.K. Rowling, saying people should not be criminalised for stating simple facts on biology. We believe in free speech in this country and Conservatives will always protect it. Um, do you think that passed muster, given that actually all of this has happened under the Conservative watch? I mean, this is a law that was passed in the Scottish Parliament, so that's not something that Rishi Sunak can directly no, but, uh, influence. But, but these cancellations and people facing non-crime hate incidents in England all happened under the Tories. Completely. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to explain to people who haven't been up against it, but, um, you know, when there's a law on the books, it... It's not enough to just say what the law says and what will happen if you go to court. What matters is how it's policed. You know, I and friends have experience of this. We know what it's like when the police come and say to you, you know, this, you shouldn't have tweeted this. And you're like, well, what law are you talking about? And they don't care. You know, they're not trained or they've been mistrained by somebody like Stonewall. And that's where I think the government really should have acted a lot earlier, is to kick people like Stonewall out of training the police yeah. because they've been training the police and they've been telling them flatly that it is abusive or a hate crime, even before the Scottish law and even in the rest of the UK, uh, to for women to say, sorry, you're not a woman, get out of my space. So, you know, that's where he should have acted. It's not this new law that is the problem for him to fix. It's the problem of the last 10 years of lobby groups misrepresenting the law and going into public sector institutions like the police, mistraining them, and then encouraging ordinary citizens to think false things, like that a man has the right to force women to say that he's a woman if that's what he wants. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see him do something about. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, talk is all very good, you know, but, but people losing their jobs uh, as a result of this, losing their livelihoods. Um, Challenger, as you know, I mean, I'm your biggest fan. You've been a fantastic advocate on this and um, I will very happily share a prison cell with you. I think, I think frankly, I think women's prisons will be an absolute hoover. I, I look in. forward to it. It'll be a holiday. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Uh, she's also of trans.